Hello and welcome to episode 52 of the No Excuses podcast. My name is Anne and I live in the middle of Worcestershire in England with my hubby and our dog who as always is lying behind me. Tom's doing himself some toast for his lunch. You might hear a little bit of um, movement from Bertie because he normally shares it with him. So uh, you might see him move, I'm not sure. I hope that I'm in focus and everything. So we're going to have a go. It's just over two weeks since I last recorded. Today is Sunday the 12th of February, which means I've done my uh, notes in pinks and purples with a little bit of orange for Valentine's Day. Not that we celebrate, we don't send cards or anything. Uh, I know people find it an excuse to do nice things, but it's just, I can't be bothered to go and look at the cards and all, you know. Tom's not a big card person anyway, so don't bother me. Anyway, today we have got a finish, um, we've got a giveaway to announce and some progress and a couple of things for once, not much incoming, which is good and not much activity either. But, you know, I want to podcast every two weeks, so here I am, whether you like it or not. So, first of all, welcome. Um, I've got a couple of new subscribers. Thank you for joining me. Uh, everything I talk about is down below and if um, you've got any questions as always please don't be shy come and ask I've got two miles running to jump along which ends at the end of next month the end of March that's any adult size top with sleeves apart from if it's one of those that are meant to go over a blouse or something so like the current sort of vest type uh, tank top we'd call them in Britain I think or well, we used to call them in Britain that sort of style uh, that's allowed as well and there are a few entries in Ravelry and on Instagram I've updated my spreadsheet that I keep everything on this morning and it's coming along nicely I sound a bit bunged up don't I in my own ears which probably means I sound dreadful to you don't know bit early for hay fever it's quite a nice day today we've got a bit of washing out quite a bit of blue sky out uh, and it's fairly dry in terms of the atmosphere so yeah quite nice the second make along is the smash the stash which i think announced last time and that will run till probably towards the end of the year maybe about late october so i can get the uh, prize in the post uh, and that is anything basically as long as you're using it from uh, more than 50 percent is being knitted from stash that's um older than six months you know i think i said so yeah and you can if you started it this year then that's fine you know because i didn't start the mail till a few weeks ago a couple of weeks ago sorry that's bert choking on his toast because he's a piggy piggy dog with quite a few of us have probably got piggy dogs on my and the next thing is what am i wearing yeah. excuse me what are you finished choking have you finished oh dear me <coughs> It sounds worse than it is. Oh, it's like a cat side or a fur ball, isn't it? I've got memories of that too. Right, what am I wearing? I'm sorry. It's, this is a City Limits jumper by uh, Tannis Lavelle or Lavelli. Uh, you know, I've got three of these. And this is the Ashbrook Shawl by Tammy Gore. This is knitted in three colours. Uh, I'll take it off. I'm not going to say it's an unusual shape. It's a weird shape. It is a weird shape. I think it had a, I was wearing it upside down. So this is the Ashbrook shawl. It's knitted in three colours. You could do it in more. You could do it in fewer. 
but you can see it starts out a bit like an asymmetric triangle and then it turns a corner there and then goes that way actually I think that might be the start so starts out you know like my match and move that I showed you the other day like a triangle so that's quite nice and you get to there and you've got a turn and then you go down so it, it yeah I can't hold it up because it's too big but there's a couple of pictures on my uh, project page that show you the sort of shape it is but it's quite nice it's got different stitches in it which is what appealed to me and you start off with the garter um, point um, then it isn't fully reversible it's got little bubbles in the red stripes and then garter and then it's got let me show you it's got like two and two um, patterning with a colour the same colour that I started in and then garter again and then that two and two again you see that might have to put pictures up and then you've got this is close to feather and fan as I'll get feather and fan hang it up that way up you'll see and then there's white bubbles on that one between those rows you see that now I hate feather and fan I say I hate it probably too strong a word I'll avoid it if I can because obviously I've got a little bit looks a little bit like that one here because I'm got a very strong aversion to bed jackets I've told you before I knitted something I wore it to work with feather and fan and I was a bit I was something I can put my finger on about the cardigan and my friend said it looks like you're wearing a bed jacket and I came home took it all out and knitted it as a plain cardigan with a little bit of pattern in it instead and then you've got other combination of stripes and bubbles there as well so it's enough to keep you interested and I don't remember how much this weighs but the the yarns involved are um christmas trifle is that one and it's got a little bit of shimmer in it and then you've got oxblood by sweet georgia red and then the white i don't know whether you can see we get a bit of the white where it's a broader band and that is sea salt by the wool barn and it's like it's not a grey but it's not a pure white it's not a bright white if you know what i mean it's a nice color actually and i think the three of them go together quite well I've not really worn this i've not worn it at the house i probably needed it about two or three years ago and now i'm going to try and put it back on <laughs> i'm gonna is that's the front oh, i'm no good at dressing i'm just putting it on because i'm cold i had a shower this morning i did dry my hair for change sometimes I complain I'm cold is because I haven't dried my hair I've got quite a bit of hair at the moment um, so there you go yeah and uh, yeah I'm finding wearing a scarf and the neck helps so that's what I'm wearing today we're going to do a giveaway because it's just gone my second podiversary I started uh, according to YouTube I put my first video up on the 25th of January 2021 so we've just missed the podiversary by about 12 days and I thought I'll do a giveaway so I'm going to make a bag for anyone and I'm only going to do a bag this time not yarn because if I have to send it away to um, abroad it doesn't go across any amount of water then the uh, postage is getting really really ridiculous now i'm very very lucky that 
a few of you who have sent me, well, most of you that I've had to post to, uh, I'm not including the charity bags because that the postage was all calculated and included for that. But um, I've been given very generous contributions toward postage. But this time I'll just do a giveaway bag, add a few little light bits and pieces in, um, a, a couple of things, but I won't include 100 grams of yarn. So it'll keep it hopefully within the first level of postage because they've reduced there are smaller bands of postage as it goes up now anyway don't worry i'm i'm doing a giveaway to enter it i'd like you to comment down below and i would like to tell me to tell you whether you celebrate valentine's day um or you don't just put the word valentine in the comment and i'll do a random comment picker and if you don't do anything and you don't want to talk about Valentine's Day, you haven't got a partner, you may have lost your partner, I'm very sorry if that's the case, or you used to do something years ago with them, just put Valentine if you want to be entered. But if you want to tell me if there's anything special you do, then let me know. You know, I always like to be nosy and learn about other people. As I've said, I do nothing. We are going to have, we'll probably have a, a little bit of a nice meal. And I don't mean any poosh. Um, my idea of a nice meal, I mean, Tom's a very good cook, but I bought the other day uh, the M&S Best Ever Steak Lasagna, uh, which is the one that we had in the freezer ready to use over Christmas if we couldn't get a decent beef joint. And it was quite nice, a bit heavy going, but it was tasty. And the lasagna can be a bit of a faff to make. It, you know, it's not too bad, but anyway. So I bought that and we might have that on uh, Valentine's Day. And if I'm being healthy, I might have a bit of salad with it. So yeah, if you want to enter the giveaway, please put the word Valentine down below in the comment. If you don't include the word Valentine, you won't get picked, right? So if you, you want to comment, but you don't want to enter the giveaway, don't put the word. Okay, am I confusing you? Probably. I'll shut up. Well, I won't shut up, but... Right, Anne, stop your gabbling. What have you finished? Well, I have finished my friend Elaine's scarf. And it isn't, hasn't been blocked yet. And it is quite long. Uh, this is the right side. You can only tell, really. So there's garter with a hint of pink. This is teal. Now... I don't know if you remember, but I started it before with the um, salt marsh colour from Attic Spin Dye. It wasn't really, it kept niggling away at me, because she does so green, that it wasn't really a green that she would wear. So I dug out some teal minis, and they're all from, I think, well, most of them are from my advent for 2021 from Adventures in Yarn Craft who's fairly local to me actually, she's in Birmingham. So you've got garter, lace, and that's a two row lace that I found on YouTube. Because I couldn't find my stitch dictionary. And then I've done a two color stripe. So that's the second color lace. And then another two color stripe. And then the third color lace. Voila. So, little details on here, apart from, um, so the, the lace is very, very easy. It's uh, knit two, knit two together, yarn over. And you do the same on the other side, um, making sure that they line up against one another. It's not that clear to see because it's variegated yarn, but that's quite nice. Um, I put the pink, the hint of pink in just because no reason but i didn't want very much of it in there it's just a hint of pink now i've done an what looks like an eye cord rolled edge on there i don't know if you can see that i don't know whether i don't even know whether the camera's pointing at me <laughs> and and it's nice because it goes to two colors when you're when you've got the two color stripes and all that is, is knit one, slip one with the yarn in front, knit one at the beginning of the row. And at the end of the row, you slip one with the yarn in front, knit one. 
slip one with yarn in front and it gives you this lovely edge this edge i think is the same as the one that you get on big love and it's also the same i think that you get on some of helen stewart's shawls so it's a commonly used one and it's one that i will use on other things as well even the front of if i've got an edge to edge cardigan i might use this because it makes a nice neat finish um yeah i haven't weighed it yet i need it needs blocking but because I started out using the name pattern, uh, N A N A M E, Nanami. Not sure how you pronounce it, but I haven't used the stitch count. I haven't used the colour sequence or the lace pattern. So I'm reluctant to credit it. Really, the only thing because it's a free pattern anyway. But um, all I did was you know see when you increase and decrease which I could have worked out for myself. But you can see that I haven't got, where you've got a lace panel, they go, ver instead of going vertically up, they're still on the slant with the scarf. Um, and I'm quite happy with that. I don't know if it's easier to see one that's a bit lighter. Probably not, because I've got variegated yarn behind me, but anyway. Um, yeah, that's. Mm. I'll take some photographs and we'll put them on the uh, on my project pages when when it's all done. And I finished it with the last of the yarn that I started it with. So that's my scarf relaying. I don't know how long it is, and I don't know what it weighs, but it's going to be. Well, it's going to be getting on for a hundred grams, I think. Maybe a bit more. But yeah, I quite enjoyed that. And this is uh, another of my 12 cast-ons that I need to post up on Instagram to say I've finished. Pleased. I'm going to put that to one side. Just chuck it over my shoulder. Now, so that's the only finished item. The next item to show you, which I haven't shown you yet, is my um, hot water bottle cover. <laughs> Doesn't look like one. But it's just a bit of crochet at the moment um i'm using a magic ball technique for it with the um some of the bfl minis that i had that i used in the advent and envy that were um come on and think where they came from it'll come to me in a minute oh yeah it was the fade that i had from emma of yarn worthy throughout the year the quarterly club so you can see I've got two yarns. I'm a bit obsessed at the moment with using two yarns of four plied together. Basically, it means things grow a lot f faster. Now, I don't know, again, whether you can see that, but I've got a row of double crochet, which I think is single in America or in other parts of the world. So that's UK term double crochet. And then um, I've done a, a form of puff stitch. So it's the same height of what we would call a treble um, without putting the hook through each time. You're just um, taking all, you take the uh, hook through all the yarns at once at the end instead of putting them through each stage of making a treble or um, in US terms, a double. So I've got all the ends on that side and I'll just tuck them in. I won't. I won't sew them in because they're all sealed with the magic knot. And here is my hot water bottle. I haven't decided what, how I'm going to do it yet, but it fits with more than enough room. And this is empty at the moment, so it would be a little bit tubbier when it's got some water in it. But it's got plenty of room. I didn't want it too tight. And you can see that if I hold that by the shoulders, it is more than the right length. So I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to do it. So just close the shoulders off a little bit so you can still pull it out. I'm going to do a couple more rows of um, double crochet at the top. And then I'm going to join it up down this side. And then when I've done that, I shall find a method of closing it at the bottom so that it doesn't fall out and I can get it in and out easy. And I 
think what I'll probably do is uh, put another row on there and put buttons on the other side or two buttons so that they're in there so it, it just folds over a little bit it won't get washed very often I don't use the hot water bottle every night but it, it, it does mean and I, will, I do want to put handles on it because I find it hard to reach if it slips too far down my legs I don't put it on my feet I tend to use this at night when I sit and watch telly with Tom after about 10 o'clock my feet are terrible in the winter get cold so easily um, and it can be quite painful and I don't always know I've got cold feet so I'll show you that it should be finished next time I see you so we're well on the way to another 12 cast ons finish so yeah I purposely didn't use any of the mustards and not many of the purples it's mainly the blues and the greens that I've used in this so yeah quite pleased with that I've been doing that at night not very often though because I'll get you know tired um, so that's a bit of progress and my other bit of progress which I'm a bit addicted to at the moment is my whited square blanket <laughs> now I think I showed it you last time and it's grown and growing and growing a little bit now I said didn't I on Instagram I think it was that I'm a bit annoyed with myself because I've got a mounted square blanket I did in single strand of four ply this is done in two strands of four ply not always the same colour together um, sometimes it is sometimes it isn't most of these are two different colours together it's just easier than trying to find the two ends of the 20 gram mini ask me how I know because I've spent two hours trying to do that one day I thought I'm not doing that again but on my first Magic Square blanket I got all the centres going the same way but I, I made a mistake very early on and I started going the wrong way um, where did I start um, I don't know where I started <laughs> but I've decided now that um, if the beginning I don't know if you can see but you've got a V shape there going up like that so all I'm going to do I'm going to start out from here yeah and I'm going to do all those along that side are going to be going one way and then when I turn the corner all of them are going to be facing the opposite way so that I end up these they've got to go the opposite way oh no I've gone wrong there haven't I just just ignore me right I've just done that wrong haven't I that should have been the other way right um, blah 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 I'll sort it out I think I'm doing the right thing still but I'm not sure now um, Yeah, I am doing the right thing, sorry. There's me V. There's me V there on this side here. And it does it there as well, just to prove I am being consistent. Yeah. But then I get to there and it's not done it. I don't think I'm going to care. I'm not going to care. I'm going to, I can't bring any consistency. I, I, I must do things a bit later in the evening and um, obviously losing it. I mean, I always go with my first mitered square blanket, I went every which way. Um, you know, I'd add a bit there and add a bit there, add a bit there, add a bit there, depending on what colour I'd pulled out the bag. Um, and I, I made them go all the same way, but you know, I'm obviously getting too old for this game. These are two strands of four ply held together, knitted on five millimeter needles. I'm using my Zing DPNs for it, and they're perfect. They're forty stitches, and I do um, a double decrease, uh, slip slip knit, uh, and then slip slip knit on the right side, and then uh, knit two together. So when I did my other one, I did a centre double decrease. 
So, and then I acquired a new yarn bowl. I'm not. <laughs> I know it's not a yarn bowl. It's a storage unit, and it's from Wilkinson's. It's got a lid with a little cutout, so I can put the yarn through there. Although because it's so lightweight, it easily comes round here. Or I could poke it through the um, handle holes. But I I saw them in the shop. They they were reduced by about a third. So each unit I've got two. I've got a queen one as well. Each of these units have cost me one pound eighty. That includes the the lid. Um, I felt them inside and they were nice and smooth and I've gone in looking for the melamine or the picnic wear ones because I've got a yarn bowl that's got that's wood bamboo from Ikea that Tom's cut a slot in for me which I don't like using but I wanted something else to put yarn in when I you know put me one in while I'm doing my blanket and things because if you pull like that sometimes they jump out don't they so cereal bowls and things like that weren't uh, were too small I didn't want to think too heavy and I didn't want to pay a lot of money for it so I think that's a bargain and they're cleanable as well so that's my bargain of the month I think I'm really annoyed about them squares now I wish I'd shut up about every which way they were going Oh, what an easy oh dear. Good job I don't take myself too seriously. My mother, hello mother, she got in the car after the last episode and she gave, oh, I've got a list here. Blah, 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 blah. I'll have to get her to come on the um, podcast, but she, I think she'll have to have her own episode because she talks a lot. Don't you, mother? So, yeah. So, we've done the hot water going... Blah, 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 blah. When I finish the hot water bottle cover, I will be working on my comfort zone um, poncho thingy bob doo -dah. So, yeah. Right, I'm going to clear the decks. See you in a sec. Part of my incoming, uh, I mentioned last time that I'd seen Max the Knitter on Instagram making, he was knitting a brioche blanket using an i-cord that he'd made with an i-cord machine and a uh yeah and yarn and a drill i think he said so i went and had a look on i've got to do that because i've got all these minis i've got all these leftovers and i've said to tom that i'll make him another blanket because his is lovely and crochet uh, but he wants something snugglier i think I bought one of these, this is Prim. Now Prim is known to be fairly good quality haberdashery, I've always thought. Uh, I always thought they were a German firm, I'm not sure. I've got the little Prim iron, which is very good. And a couple of other Prim things. And basically, um, I think I put on Instagram a picture of the eye cord I'd made using magic balls and it worked fine for a little while. And you put the yarn in there there is a video and then there's some little hooks you see those little hooks and they've got if i they go let me then if you can see but they go up sorry i have to get my face near they go up and down and catch and if you've done corking or french knitting when you're a child and i know a lot of you said you had then this is a very easy way of achieving a very long length in a short time. But I had to go with it and it kept jamming. Now it feels ever so smooth as I do this. You do get a little bit of residue fluff in here. Um, and I thought this is getting ridiculous. I'm quite intuitive with mechanical stuff. This is plastic. I didn't want to force anything and I was holding it. I was trying different things going back very slightly and starting again but it kept sticking and sticking and sticking and Tom said to me just send it back no point you do get a weight as well to hang on your knitting so it's pulling down all the time uh, you don't need that when you're doing it manually with a, um, a French knitting dolly really because you don't really get speed up but that's 
that's essential really but it's got um it's not got a complete hook in it so it kept slipping out at first to make sure that uh, it was on quite securely so tom said send it back so i completed the paperwork on amazon and he took it down to uh because as far as i'm concerned it was faulty because i couldn't get it to work um took it down to our local ups drop-off shop and the man inside said no look at the wall it says very clearly you need three copies of this documentation and it should all be in a document wallet it doesn't say that on amazon he says you put this here you put that there and you put that and you and you take this with you to the shop and he went no he said they won't accept it without the document wallet and with all the documentation in <sighs> so i'm denied about it uh, we unpacked it and had a look and it was 18 pound and I'm going to have another go at it. And Tom's looked at the bottom and he decided if he needs to, he can get into the bottom and have a look. It's quite useful being married to an engineer who likes to think about things. He hasn't taken it off yet. Um, so I'm going to have another go because I really do want to do the... Um, I won't do the brioche, I don't think, but I really want to do the knitting of the blanket. And with that, I bought... Where is it? I bought some knitting needles, which I can't now feel. There we go. I bought. See, this is how prepared I am as usual. Whoa. I bought some eight millimeter um, fixings, and they're one hundred and fifty centimeters long. Very long cable. You can see. I'll try to swirl it around so it sits nicely somewhere where it ends up I'll put them away in a minute um, I bought another fixed circular and that is a higher higher sharp uh, 4.5 millimetre I can't remember why I bought that <laughs> but I did uh, and I bought a couple of tips as well oh, here you are. my higher higher sharps are my, are my favourite uh, those are 5.5 just the four inch tips i think what i found was i've got 5.5 tips that are five inches and if you're doing a small circumference you like say you want to have a weight or something they don't really work they're too long the five inch you can't really use a 16 inch cable with them and then um i bought four and a half four inches as well because i was running out of them doing the different cast ons i've got so that's my incoming relay with, with this. So I'm going to have another go. Um, and I got in the car to go out with my mum. And she said, which one do you want? And she handed me this one, which is an original. One from the Griffiths household many years ago when we were kids. And that's our corker or French knitting implement. Little nails hammered into the wooden um, reel. And there was a longer one as well, so I chose this little one. And I took my length that I'd done off there, put it on here, a bit fiddly to do. <laughs> and then I started doing it with a, like a tapestry needle. No, you know, like um, one of those very thick blunt needles that you get. Chibi, I think it is. And it's taken me... 15 minutes to do about four foot and that would stop starting as well it took me about 15 minutes to do about an inch <laughs> i'm not making a blanket out of this <laughs> for every day and i get very bored so yeah so i've got that for posterity reasons only i'm gonna have another go at making something with that we'll watch this space uh okay de -de 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 -de. uh that's it really i'm going to be a shorter episode today but i do want to keep up i think it's more important that i keep up with the fo roughly fortnightly uh visit to see you than it is to have a lot of things to talk about really because after all it's uh whatever you get up to isn't it i've probably spent most of my time faffing and not making decisions thinking about making decisions you know me and planning don't really go well together 
or decision making doesn't so sorry if i just knocked you so we're on to activity now uh not this thursday just gone the thursday before i went to evesham valley with my mom uh, i was going to go and look at cotswold needle craft a little shop there that um, stocked west yorkshire spinners but they were shut they've closed down they were a great little shop they've got lots of quilting fabric they've got um had a wide variety of yarn none of it hand dyed but they did west yorkshire spinners um and they did lots of knick and knacky news they had a big table at the back for uh knit and natter but i didn't really see anybody buying anything in there now and, and i don't suppose you know some of these little shops they find it hard to compete with uh, online shops and bigger stores so yeah it's a shame really but I, i'm guilty of not buying anything of quantity from there myself so when i needed them or i thought i might need them they, they weren't there to see i was thinking of buying some exquisite lace from uh, west yorkshire spinners perhaps in the champagne color to strengthen my camel's yarn alpaca that i've got a dk because i'm a bit worried about i'm going to make the hoagie locatelli i cut iris with it and i'm a bit worried about it being so soft i've been wearing various jumpers of various materials like my felix my ama and they pill considerably i've told you i ruin things i really do so it's a bit you know i was thinking if i could strengthen that yarn with a little tiny thread of something it might help anyway i'm not going to do it i'm going to carry on knitting it you know soon Probably when I've, uh, yeah, when I go off trying to work out my mitered square blanket. <laughs> I don't really need a huge blanket, you see. I don't need to make it big enough for the bed. I just need to make it, because I always add to it when I want to. But um, I want to make it big enough for, to envelop me. Yes, it's definitely for me as well. So, yeah, we had a cup of coffee in uh, coffee number one and mum bought a top in fat face that was in their sale and that looked really nice in a dark red. Uh, and then we came home after a couple of hours, so that was nice. Um, and then last Thursday, a week later, I met Pip Denise up. Uh, we met Liz in the centre of Worcester and we went to the... Colombian cafe that's in Worcester I've not been there it's near the bus station uh, but very busy in terms of people popping in for proper Colombian coffee I don't drink coffee very often when I'm out because my tummy can do a nosedive with it so uh, as much as I'd love to try it Liz decided to try the strong bitter and then she got a headache afterwards apparently don't ask for decaf because they don't do it <laughs> Um, but it's an interesting little place it's done up the decor is quite quirky uh, like South American colours um, very very nice uh, very friendly atmosphere a lot of people talking Spanish in there so we you know, felt quite comfortable we spent oh, probably an hour and a half in there but Denise and Liz both had um, what they called white cornbread I think it's called that. And you get a disc of a, a bread. Yeah, probably about five inches uh, with, with different toppings on and a bit of salad at the side. And they said it was all lovely. The salad looked really fresh, quite chopped up, red cabbage and different things. Um, they said the dressing was nice. Denise's didn't look as appetising because she had what they called beef stuffing, even though it wasn't stuffed in anything. But she said it was very tasty. It looked like pulled beef but a pale version uh, so it didn't look that nice but yeah she said it was delicious and Liz had um, something like mozzarella tomato avocado and pesto and she said that was really nice going to take her husband there uh, but getting back to the drinks they give you a your own uh, filter coffee machine um, contraption and you can you know turn it around whether you want it medium or strong Liz put hers on the strongest. So she had strong coffee and she brewed it for longer. And it came in, I'll put a photograph up. I think I put them on Instagram earlier in the week. And then 
Um, and that was nice, a bit different, you know. You can, and it just takes a few minutes to drip through. It's a filter cop at top. We used to get them in certain restaurants, didn't we, a while ago? Can't remember where. And then um, I had a hot chocolate, and it came in a metal jug with a wooden, what well, looked like a wooden spoon, but when you took it out, it was like a stirrer. Uh, I'd like a bulbous end with four cuts in it, wide cuts. You, know, you could twiddle it about and then a mug to pour it into when you were ready. And it was delicious because it wasn't that sweet, actually. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, and Denise had a beer. So, yeah, I say we stayed there quite a long time and that was nice. I had a chat. Um, and then we went to m and and spent about the same amount of time. I think we went in one shop in between, that was Wilkinson's, where I got the yarn bowls, i.e. storage boxes. Well, went into m and uh, spent ages there. I did have a cake in m and uh, and a cup of tea because by then I was getting very hungry because I'd, I'd had some cereal in the morning. Um, and then Liz left to get her bus because she had to go home a bit earlier. Uh, and a man came up and said, hello, Anne. And it was a man who, he said he left our works 24 years ago. And I was quite close to him at work because uh, we were both involved in the development of systems and the new computer systems in the part of the department I worked in. Um, so I was on the phone to him all the time and vice versa. We, we got on really, really well. Um, and I remember his wife as well, Jen. So I had a chat to Paul and Jen. Denise didn't know them, but she knew some of the people that we were talking about so it was really nice to see that he hadn't really aged i mean i think he must be near my mum's age and you know he must be in his late 70s early 80s but they they both look really really good but it's scary when they said their one son was 50 and i remember them being kids i was at work for 33 years and i've been left seven so if you want if you're young and you want to get it on and do something do it Tell you, it flies by. Uh, and then <laughs> we had parked up around the corner from Fourgate Street, um, a nice high curb. I got into the car okay, and Denise was putting the wheelchair away. Now there was a big, there was a lamppost above her, and so she was standing in her own shadow, and she struggled a bit with the chair. But what I didn't know is that one of the things that fastens the back into the chair, we can't get a replacement very easily. We've already lost a couple that are the same thing off the battery box down below. It's an American chair. It's probably nearly 20 years old when it was made. Um, and it's finding the actual combination. Tom said the bolt sort of chamfers off at the end or something. So it's difficult to find it. He'd have to grind it down himself. And she was having all this trouble with something. Um, and it, we got home. Oh, no, I know what happened. Got in the car. We drove off. Got to Denise's house. But on the way, as we pulled away, I realised that she hadn't locked the back of the chair and engaged the motors again. So it stops it from moving in the car. So if you put these things at the back like that, so they're not pointing at you, you can freewheel the chair and push it which is what they do when they put the chair in the car, so they can move it easily. But she hadn't put it back to pointing at her, so that the wheels were moving. So I drove carefully home to her place. She opened the boot, did that, fixed that, and then remembered that she dropped one of the things out the back of the car. Her husband said, I'll take you into town. We'll go and have a look. And I said, no. I said, me and Denise will go back if Denise doesn't mind. She said, that was fine. We'll go back now and we'll go and see if we can find it because I knew we'd have trouble trying to find a decent replacement. And it was only, it would have been within half an hour of us getting back down there. And it should have been in the gutter. So Denise is walking around with a phone in her hand with the torch on, like, trying to look under all these cars. And there's a man standing in a doorway and a... Uh, she said, oh, she said, I'm looking for, she said, I'm looking for a screw that's fallen. She said, it's like a screw with a knob on the end um, that's fallen off my friend's wheelchair when I was putting it in the boot for her. And he went, oh, right, okay. Anyway, um, 
this the van that had been in front of me the bloke got in and started the van for some reason but didn't move it i didn't think he moved it and he got out he said what are you doing love because he noticed to try to look under cars and things because i said to him it's probably rolled into the gutter and uh she told him and the man that had been standing at the door came out and he said is this it <laughs> and apparently what has happened because they were working on the building obviously in the evening it was to be and they're a construction company they thought it was theirs and somebody had picked it up he said and taken it indoors thinking it, it might be off their equipment or whatever so and Denise said oh thank you so much she said I'd buy you a pint he said don't worry love he said yeah she said it's a crucial part it's an essential part of the wheelchair which in a way it is because it's so hard to replace so I got me knocked back yeah she was like having to explain that she wanted she was looking for a screw with a knob on the end and if you've got our sense of humor you know we never grow up anyway um so all's well it ends well but it meant i didn't get home till about seven o'clock it's always happens when i'm out with denise don't get home till seven o'clock i don't mind but friday i was absolutely shattered um i had my shower in the morning and I went back to bed because I just couldn't move and that's when my strong drugs were absolutely and my hips got this problem at the moment my left hip can clean up I don't know what it is mum said it could be sciatica because it does travel down my leg a bit but hip pain travels doesn't you get transfer pain so it's nothing that will get sorted because they won't do anything to me they won't operate on me um, I'm a bit complex and apparently I'm a big infection risk. I get infections very easily. So, got to put up with it. So, I'm okay now. I went to Mum's yesterday, which was Sunday. Mum is making me the pecker jacket. I'll put a couple of photographs up here. She's doing it in a, a flat wool weave with um, lime green lining, which is going to look gorgeous. But she's had to make a lot of alterations, make it shorter, take a lot of, um, take some. The arm holes are going to be deep enough for me to be able to use comfortably, which they are, but it does mean there's a lot of material, a little bit still, on the shoulders. Um, and she's going to tell me how much meterage to order some boiled wool from Empress Mills, because they've got a brilliant range of boiled wool, which doesn't need lining and it doesn't fray. So you, have, you won't have bulky hems, even though it's quite a, a heavy fabric. So yeah, I've tried that on. Uh, my nephew Alec was there. He got me out of the car, saying my mum doing it, and pushed me up their slope and got got me into the house. And we stayed and had a, he had to chat with us for a bit, and then he went because he'd already been at my mum's a little while. So yeah, so that was nice. Uh, I don't know if I said it last time, but I am going to Wonderwall on the Sunday. I've bought my tickets. Penny and I are going on the Sunday. Let me know if you're going to be there. I know that some of you will be. Uh, yeah, I did mention it last time because I said I'll probably say, uh, unless you run into me as we're going round, that I'll sit down for a cup of tea at about uh, one o'clock uh, and I'll sit there for about an hour. So if anybody wants to come and find me, uh, when I've looked at the map, I'll tell you where I'm on about. Because if you go in the main doors of the main hall, what I can class as the biggest hall, and you turn right and you go right to the bottom, there's a, well, I don't know if it's right to the bottom, but there's a quite a big breakout area where you can um, buy coffee um, and buns, I think. So, yeah. so there we are, and I've been talking for 51 minutes. A lot of it waffle, as usual. I don't know what percentage, really, is knitting, and what percentage is waffle. I don't think you come here for the knitting, really, do you? Thank you for your support. You are a lovely bunch. And I want to say a special thank you to a lovely lady who has sent me some yarn. Um, she sort of inherited it, didn't you? I'm not going to say her name in case she doesn't want to be mentioned on the podcast, but you know who you are. She sent me two glorious packages of double knit yarn with the idea that I might be able to knit the cargill. And I will if I do a stripy one because, because I'm so fat. And it is a very, very yarn hungry uh, pattern, unfortunately, in terms of costing it out you know if you even something i haven't costed what it might be if i bought something like uh uh, uh even a 20 percent wool 80 percent acrylic mix 
would still be about fifty pound in my size. So, um, sort of, I still want it, but it's so yarn hungry. I've obviously got nothing in stock. But this lovely lady sent me two gorgeous packages of double knitting. Said, what if I can't use it to, um, you know, give it away or charity? Uh, now I know that one of the packages were not so much my colours that I'd wear anyway uh, and but I know somebody that would find them really really useful for blankets and things but the other package <laughs> it nearly brought a tear to my eye I did tell her that um, it had some falcon wool in it now I think I've said before that when I first started knitting no not when I first started knitting when I first started buying my own wool I was told about a hermit by my grandma and it was a mail order catalogue from Yorkshire where they still had quite, you know, even more mills than they've got now, they've got far fewer mills but they still had a few going and anyway they used to send you a catalogue, it didn't cost you anything and it had proper samples in like, like a shade card would so you could feel the yarn and you could see what um, the true colour was and actually I always remember they had Lopi in there i don't know if it was called let lope but it was thick and i used to think what can you make out of that and wouldn't that be weird to knit with and i never bought any but i, I used to buy a lot of their pure wool um in their dk um and then hermit finished i think or they got bought out by falcon and then i started using falcon wool as well and they were my main um their color choices were far better than you can get in the shop at the time I thought anyway and they represented quite good value for money even with paying the postage so thank you you very generous person um, you are a lovely lot you know you, I've had a very very generous month from you and yeah can't do it without you because if you don't watch I'll be talking to myself which I'm very good at by the way but it's not that healthy is it not all the time I'm going now before we get onto any other subjects I'll see you soon. I'll see you in about two weeks. You take care.